limitless blood supply is not too far off. It's taken nearly two decades, but scientists may finally have the recipe to create stem cells, that wellspring of life and holy grail of regenerative medicine. A Boston research team programmed human pluripotent stem cells to become endothelial cells, which typically line the inside of blood vessels. These were injected with special proteins called transcription factors, then transplanted into mice. Weeks later, the cells had multiplied, and in some cases formed a wide range of human blood cells in the mice's bodies. A second research team used blood cells from mice and injected them with a mix of transcription factors. The cells morphed into stem cells after incubating in petri dishes designed to mimic a human blood vessel environment. When injected into weak mice that had been treated with radiation, the stem cells regenerated both blood and immune cells. The mice recovered and went on to live full lifespans. The groundbreaking research from both teams provides hope for patients who suffer from blood cancers and other diseases. But tests need to be carried out to determine any negative effects before the procedure can go to human trials. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Science has continuously been making leaps and bounds in fighting against the world's many diseases. Israeli scientists show how melanoma spreads in the body. Scientists at Tel Aviv University have made a landmark discovery on melanoma, a brutally aggressive form of skin cancer that kills a person every 52 minutes. Melanoma forms in the epidermis of the skin. At this stage, the cancer cells are not able to spread as they have no access to blood vessels. Researchers discover that the cancer sends out tiny vesicles containing microRNA to the dermis layer. The vesicles induce changes in the dermis, including features of cancer-associated fibroblasts. The changes enable the dermis to absorb the cancer cells. The real threat of melanoma begins when the cancer cells have access to blood vessels and are spread to vital organs such as the brain, lungs, liver, and bones. The team also found two chemicals that could stop the spread of melanoma in its initial stages. One is capable of stopping the vesicles from being sent to the dermis, and the other capable of preventing the reaction to the vesicles in the dermis itself. Malaria vaccine could lead to general cure for cancer. Scientists researching a vaccine against malaria in pregnant women may have accidentally discovered an effective weapon against cancer. Scientists from the University of Copenhagen and the University of British Columbia have identified that the carbohydrate the malaria parasite attaches itself to in the placenta of a pregnant woman is identical to a carbohydrate present in cancer cells. Scientists have created the protein that the malaria parasite uses to attach to the placenta in a laboratory and have added a toxin. The combination of the malaria protein and toxin finds cancer cells, is absorbed, then the toxin is released inside, causing the cancer cells to die. Research groups from the two universities have tested thousands of samples from brain tumors to leukemias and have found that the malaria protein is able to attack more than 90% of all types of tumors. The drug was tested on mice implanted with three types of human tumors, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, prostate cancer, and metastatic bone cancer. The mice that were given doses of protein and toxin showed far higher survival rates than the untreated mice. Researchers are now working towards being able to conduct human trials. They say the earliest possible time frame would be in four years. New drug offers hope in fight against Alzheimer's. The drug aducanumab is believed to aid in the clearing of toxic proteins hypothesized to cause Alzheimer's disease. A recent study measured brain activity of 165 participants, some of whom received the drug once a month for up to 54 weeks, while others received a placebo. Of those who received the drug, 103 experienced a reduction in the amount of tangled amyloid beta, the toxic proteins thought to trigger Alzheimer's in their brains. For years, scientists have debated whether the buildup of amyloid beta protein causes memory loss and ultimately Alzheimer's disease. In a clinical study, researchers injected the drug aducanumab in early-stage Alzheimer's patients. One or two in every thousand of the antibodies enter the brain, where they latch on to wayward amyloid beta proteins. Researchers believe that other cells called microglia then arrive and clear the aberrant proteins from the brain. 
The trial's results were in favor of the amyloid hypothesis, which suggests that the elimination of the protein itself might alleviate the disease's symptoms. Two larger Phase 3 trials are now in progress and plan to run until at least 2020. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Gene-edited immune cells clear babies incurable leukemia. A baby girl in Britain suffering from leukemia has become the first person in the world to receive an experimental gene-editing procedure that miraculously reversed her cancer. Layla Richards was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia when she was just 14 weeks old, a disease in which the bone marrow makes too many immature lymphocytes. This is the most common type of cancer in children. In a healthy child, the bone marrow makes blood stem cells that can become myeloid stem cells or lymphoid stem cells, which then develop into mature red blood cells, platelets, and white blood cells. However, in a child with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, too many stem cells develop into lymphoblasts, B lymphocytes, or T lymphocytes, which are in fact leukemia cells. Leukemia cells are not able to fight infection, and they take up the space for healthy blood cells in the blood and bone marrow. This may lead to infection, anemia, and easy bleeding. Doctors in London performed a new gene editing technology known as Talon on Layla, which had previously only been tested on mice. The technology uses molecular tools that act like scissors to cut specific genes in order to make T cells from healthy donors behave in two specific ways. First, the cells are able to become invisible to a powerful leukemia drug that would normally kill them. Second, they are reprogrammed to target and fight against leukemia cells only. Layla spent several months in isolation due to her extremely weak immune system after the procedure. After the leukemia cells were confirmed to have been eliminated from Layla's body, she was given a bone marrow transplant to replace her entire blood and immune system. The treatment was prepared by scientists at London's Great Ormond Street Hospital, University College London and French biotech company Selectus. Selectus is going to fund full clinical trials of the therapy starting next year. Researchers develop new ways to fight superbugs. Drug-resistant superbugs have rendered many antibiotics ineffective. But now there's hope. Currently, the only treatment for bacterial infections is through the use of antibiotics, which, after passing through bacterial cellular walls, kill bacteria. However, bacteria over time can mutate to protect themselves, commonly through developing an efflex pump, which expels antimicrobial polymers. Researchers at UT Southwestern Medical Center in Texas have discovered a synthetic compound that blocks FX pumps, making superbugs once again vulnerable. And researchers at the University of Melbourne in Australia have developed a star-shaped peptide polymer which is non-toxic. This polymer can fight bacteria in multiple ways, including ripping apart the bacterial cellular wall, making it difficult for superbugs to become resistant. Both methods still need to be refined, and both research teams are still working toward human trials. Man's paralyzed limb reanimated with the help of a brain chip. A team from Ohio has made a medical breakthrough, successfully developing technology that allows brain signals to bypass a spinal injury and transmit straight to the muscles. When Ian Burkhart broke his neck four years ago, it damaged his spinal cord and left him paralyzed from the chest down. He retained some movement in his shoulders and biceps, but lost sensation in his hands and legs. To help him, doctors inserted a chip the size of an eraser head into his motor cortex, the area of the brain that controls hand movements. The chip records brain signals for specific hand movements and sends these to a computer via a port on the back of Burkhardt's head. Once the signals are decoded, they're transmitted to an arm sleeve studded with electrodes. The electrodes stimulate the muscles and allow them to move. The system, called NeuroLife, has allowed Burkhardt to make six different hand and wrist motions. It marks the first time a paralyzed man has been able to regain movement using recorded brain signals.